Live from Waterford and Ungarvan, this is Waterford at One News. Good afternoon, I'm Sinead O'Hearn. Today's top stories, a Waterford councillor believes senior Gardaí are reviewing their decision to locate the local Garda division headquarters in Kilkenny instead of Waterford. Boris Johnson will attempt to trigger a general election later today. Protests are continuing at meat factories in Waterford and in sport, Dutch woman Vera Pau is the new manager of the Republic of Ireland women's team. A Waterford Fianna Fáil councillor says he believes the decision to locate the headquarters of the new local Garda division in Kilkenny is now being reviewed. It's proposed to merge the existing Waterford division with Carlo and Kilkenny as part of major structural changes within Angortha Síochána. Eddie Mulligan says he was concerned at that at the Joint Policing Committee meeting in Waterford on Monday night that Garda were not able to confirm that Waterford would be the divisional HQ. He's written to the Commissioner Drew Harris highlighting the good community police Policing already in place in Waterford, which will be diluted in losing the superintendents in Waterford, Dungarvan and Tremor. From the sources I was hearing, I was understanding the decision was made for it to be located on a geographical basis within Kilkenny. Now with the questions rising in relation to the National Plan and Framework and planning for the future, I understand that it has been looked at again in relation to locating the divisional headquarters in Waterford. So all the representations that have been made by our national uh, representatives, by the councillors, by the Joint Policing Committee is taking effect and it is being looked at. Councillor Mulligan says there are a number of reasons why the HQ should be in Waterford. For number one is the critical mass of Gardaí located here. Number two, the infrastructural facilities that are already here. Number three is the crime statistics that are in relation to Waterford compared to Kilkenny. Number four is the prison committals and the requirement of supervision, probationers. And while it's up there and the decision is imminent, I felt we needed to hit hard with facts. There have been fiery exchanges in the House of Commons ahead of a crucial Brexit vote this evening. The opposition looks set to pass laws blocking a no-deal Brexit while Boris Johnson's trying to force a snap election. Our political correspondent Sean Defoe reports on a dramatic First Prime Minister's questions from Boris Johnson. Under fire, Boris Johnson came into the Commons with a clear plan of action, call for an election and attack the bill that's aimed at blocking no deal. There is only one thing that stands in our way, it is the surrender bill. And what his surrender bill would do, this wretched surrender bill... While also rounding on Jeremy Corbyn's plans. What is the slogan? What do we want? What do we want? Dither and delay. When do we want it? We don't know. Corbyn asked a series of questions about Mr Johnson's plans for Brexit and got few answers. These negotiations that he talks about are a sham. All he's doing is running down the clock. Johnson's defence was attacked. I know he's worried about free trade deals with America, but there's only one chlorinated chicken that I can see in this house, and he's on that bench. Will he confirm it? The SNP's Ian Blackford lost patience with the lack of answers. Mr Speaker, I know he's a new boy. We ask the questions, he's supposed to answer them. A bruising first Prime Minister's questions for Johnson. If he gets his way and an election, it may also be his last. Sean Defoe, Leinster House. Farmers protesting at dawn meets on the Waterford-Kilkenny border say they're there for the long haul. The protests were scaled back on Friday of last week to allow a Chinese delegation visit the site. However, the situation has escalated again in recent days. This farmer spoke to WLR News. If you want to come to dawn meets in Grana, you're very welcome to come. We'll leave you in, we'll invite you in with the cattle. But by God, you will not be coming out with your trucks. You may leave them here and we're here for the long haul. If someone comes down here with their truck... It'll be staying here until these lads sorted out. And that's what we're going to do. He says talks with Dawn Meads took place on Monday. The talks went on in, in the hotel in Waterford City at, at, at 11 o'clock and they, and they plum awesome and fobbed them off there until 4 o'clock. And we came back here to Granny at 8 o'clock in the evening. And by 10 past 8, people had their minds made up and we walked straight across the road back, back here. We were after getting nothing. The questions were, what did you get for us? Nothing, 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 nothing. The Agriculture Committee will meet later to discuss the ongoing beef row and try and find a solution to the crisis. While there are concerns there may be a shortage of beef on supermarket shelves, the Irish Cattle and Sheep Association says the kill figure for cattle was down 7,000 last week compared to the same period last year. It expects that it will be even lower this week. Eddie Punch, General Secretary of the ICSA, says supermarkets should be concerned and should be involved in the beef talks. Uh, if we have no uh, hugely disruptive 
supplies this week, it is going to uh, very quickly put pressure on a variety of contracts that meat, uh, meat factories have. And the question is, which ones fall first? Uh, but because of short supply chains, uh, another week of this will certainly cause mm-hmm. disruption in our view. A senior engineer with Waterford Council says it's only in the last year that Carroll's Cross could be deemed a high-risk junction. There were three serious crashes at the junction on the main Waterford to Cork Road over the past year, one of which was fatal. Gabriel Hines told Damien Tiernan on Data Today that 13 to 14,000 vehicles travel that road on a daily basis. He says that all collisions are recorded. In Carroll's Cross, just in the last 12 months, there was three serious accidents, one fatality up to that from around 2012 to mid-2018. While there were accidents there, the accidents there were material damage and non-serious injury. Up to, I suppose, maybe 12 months ago, we would have had discussions with TII in relation to it. It wasn't at that stage deemed as a high-risk location, probably only in the last 12 months since the last three serious accidents that have occurred. It has been upgraded now to a high collision location, I suppose. The Acting Director of Services says they need to do a full evaluation of the junction. And we need to look at the accident history, what contributed to the recent accidents. We need to look at the traffic volumes. We need to look at the turning movements. We need to look at the traffic speeds. We need to look at the existing geometry. And we need to do a, a complete assessment of the junction. Look at all different engineering solutions, like from grade separation to roundabouts to traffic camming to maybe statute reduction speed. We, we need to look at all those evaluate them and see which ones are best suited for that location. Guardi say there may be people protecting the person who murdered a Dublin teenager 20 years ago without realising it. A renewed appeal for information has been made over the death of 17-year-old Raynard Murray as investigators still don't have a prime suspect and haven't established a motive. She was found stabbed to death in Glenageary in the early hours of September 4th, 1999 on the way home from Dunleary Town Centre. Raynard's dad, Jim, says she suffered a lonely death. With her dying breath, she struggled to finish that journey but died within a short distance from home. Our beautiful child died on the pavement with no loving, caring person there to help or comfort her. It's 20 years since Raynard was murdered, but to us her awful death is still vivid in our minds and we feel the pain of her loss every day. The crew of Rescue 116, who died in a helicopter crash in March 2017, will be remembered at the annual Dara Fitzpatrick run at Waterford Airport on Saturday week. Four crew members, Dara Fitzpatrick, Mark Duffy, Paul Ormsby and Kieran Smith, died when out on a rescue mission off the coast of County Mayo. Captain Dara Fitzpatrick worked for many years at Waterford Airport. All fun raise, funds raised will go to the hospice home care team and the Search and Rescue Dog Association. Rescue 117 crew member Neville Murphy explains the connection with Waterford Hospice. A very good friend of, of Dara's, uh, Coit. Uh, she was a part of our run team as well. She helped us in registration and medals during the, the, the past two runs. And unfortunately, she passed away last year with cancer. So this year, she um, had a big experience and her family had a big experience with the home care team in particular from the hospice. We thought it was just, you know, a nice little touch to, to remember Coit as well. So that's, that kind of makes it a little bit extra special this year. WLR Sport Starting with soccer, where Vera Pau says she's very excited to become the new manager of the Republic of Ireland women's team. The former 89 times capped Netherlands international was at Tala Stadium last night to watch Ireland's 2-0 win over Montenegro. Pau, who previously managed South Africa, Scotland and Russia, says she was impressed by the team's performance in that Euro 2021 qualifier victory. Defender Louise Quinn says it's important now to have Colin Bell's permanent successor in place. It's time now, I think, we've... uh They've they've been really thorough with the process, which is exactly what you want as well. You just want the right person in for the job, and and that's it. I think just having exactly just be be settled, have that permanent manager in there is going to be, you know, it's it's really really important for any team. 
Callum Robinson has sat out training ahead of the Republic of Ireland's Euro 2020 qualifier against Switzerland. The Sheffield United winger felt a tightness in his thigh muscle, but he's expected to be fit for tomorrow's match at the Aviva. Waterford FC have a break from the league now and are at home to Hearts under-21 in the Scottish Challenge Cup this Friday at the RSC. Kick-off is at 7.45. On Monday week, the Blues host defending champions Dundalk in the quarter-finals of the FAI Cup at the RSC. Shane Duggan says it's good to have a breather from the league after a busy few weeks. It's nice to have a little break away from the league now because obviously we were under a lot of pressure at the moment but it was nice to get that win there and bring us into the Dundalk game which is another great occasion for the club, you know, and for Waterford as well. Quarterfinal Cup against Dundalk, which would be a fantastic occasion. While in tennis, having watched his great rival Roger Federer suffer a shock defeat last night, three-time champion Rafa Nadal will be looking to avoid an upset in the US Open quarterfinals later. The number two seed faces Argentina's Diego Schwartzman for a place in the last four. Gael Monfi takes on Matteo Berrettini in today's other men's quarterfinal. In the women's quarters, it's Bianca Andrescu against Elise Mertens and Belinda Bencic faces Donna Vekic. That's the latest on WLR. Our next bulletin is at two.